Is this going to stop uh, all the violence that we hear about in, in Illinois, in Chicago? No, I don't think so. Um, the reality is that most of the gun violence that we see in a city like Chicago uh, is not committed with these sort of long guns in the first place. Uh, much of it is committed with handguns. That's the sort of dark truth about any kind of discussion about American gun policy is by volume, it's handguns that are inflicting the most deaths, the most injuries, things like that. But it's also handguns that are the most untouchable in terms of public policy, in terms of restrictions, things like that. And so, you know, in reality, this is uh, it's it's symbolic and it, that might not mean it's not a bad symbol. You know, I don't personally favor this sort of thing. But uh, if you're passionate about gun control, I can understand symbolic victories might matter. But no, the reality is, is that most of the deaths that are going to be associated with guns are the are the exact guns that everybody has basically agreed are going to be available no matter what. And that's just the way it is. Uh, let me ask you this. So you talk about political inconvenience, and I think about what happened in Highland Park. We talk, talked about this when it happened. Seven people uh, died. A tragedy, uh, undoubtedly, and there's really no other word for it. 60 hurt, 51 shootings. Uh, the 4th of July weekend, that same weekend, uh, in, in Chicago, eight killed, 60 hurt, 51 shootings. If you can't take away uh, the handguns, which, as you point out, are, are problematic because of the Supreme Court and others, uh, why is there such a reluctance, if saving lives is the priority, uh, to simply lock up the people who commit gun crimes? Well, that's the trick of it, isn't it? Is that um, you, if you actually had effective, you know, enforcement at the level of dangerous people rather than dangerous objects, right? Because the reality is, is that a gun in the hands of, you know, 97% of people who at least assuming they know how to use it safely is not a dangerous object, but in the hands of a dangerous person, well, just about anything can be dangerous. So um, I think that there is going to be a substantial push, right? Especially if, you know, we remain gun locked or <laughs> deadlocked on gun policy, although gun locked be a good name for it. Uh, in terms of restricting access to it, you may see a push. I mean, remember, Joe Biden is the author of the, you know, the 90s crime bill, or at least one of its major co-sponsors, to lengthen prison terms. We sort of tried that in the 1990s, oh, yeah, but the Armed Career Criminals Act. And, uh, you know, perhaps there are some indications that it worked. So you may see something like that. Oh, oh, come on. From, from this president and in, in Democrats uh, who control the Senate, these, the, there's absolutely no desire even at the, at the local level and at the progressive level and at the progressive lawmaker level uh, to, to continue to lock, to lock people up, and much, less, much less lock them up, to arrest them and to hold them responsible uh, and, and, to, and to charge them with, with felonies. I want, these are the Illinois state senators, uh, Democrats who are for the ban. Take a listen. With a keen awareness of the massacres occurring regularly, we as a chamber have an opportunity to stick, take a step in the right direction. The right of the people to keep and bear arms is intended to produce a secure state. We do not have a secure state. I'm, I'm listening to you. You don't sound like a liberal here you, or, or a progressive, which, which we know you are. You sound like a, a gun-toting Texan. Well, you can call me a gun-toting communist, I assume, uh, because, it, you know, it was Karl Marx who said that the right of the working people to bear arms should be defended by any means if necessary. And that's the real problem. You'll notice the one group of people who never get disarmed in any of these gun control debates is we never disarm the police, right? We talk about defunding the police, even though that never really actually happened, but we never talk about disarming the police. And so what you're going to be left with, I thought it was ironic, that guy in the Senate who just commented, we're not a secure state. Well, the sort of security he has in mind is evidently that the police, who, by the way, it is police shootings that are actually most of the gun deaths in the United States, perhaps justified, perhaps not. But it is police shootings that are the major source of violence. The police are going to have wait, guns wait, hold on. You're no saying, matter wait, wait, what. Hold on, hold on. You're saying more people die by being shot by the police than by being shot not by the police? Yeah, but this, in the, if you look at it, it doesn't come out of the crime statistics because some of those shootings perhaps are justified shootings and things like that. But if you just think about it logically, who are the group of people who are carrying around service weapons in their jobs most of the time and stuff like that? So I'm not saying that all of those shootings are uh, wrong or illegal or even, you know, shouldn't have happened. But I'm saying that the group of people that is going to be armed for sure is the state. And that's why from the perspective of somebody who believes, if you believe as I believe, that the sort of, you know, state as it operates now is really a tool that it Presses the working oh, okay. class. The last thing you want to do is disarm the, the, the people who are already under the thumb of the state in the first place. I, I, I'm 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 with you on the Karl Marx quote. Uh, just from a statistic standpoint, 1,100 people uh, were, were were killed by police 
uh, last year. I'm pretty sure the homicide rate uh, in the city of Chicago, there were seven, 800 just in Chicago uh, killed versus nationwide. But we'll, we'll debate the statistics later. Ian, good to see you as always. Thank you, sir. You too. Bye bye. Yeah. Coming up. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.